Pokemon games have had a long history of having new generations followed by alternate games which act as the definitive experience of them. With the newest generation of Pokemon being on Nintendo Switch with Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, now for the first time Pokemon has the opportunity of delivering additional content through the means of DLC. And so we have the Pokemon Sword and Shield Expansion Pass. With Part 1 already out in June, the more extensive Part 2 has finally arrived with the Crown Tundra. So how is it, and is this DLC as a whole worth it for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield? As the Crown Tundra is the more adventure and story driven part of the Expansion Pass DLC, naturally it is safe to say that this is where a majority of your value for the purchase comes from. The Isle of Armor still offered some good stuff, but the main story content can be completed in about 2-4 to four hours for most people. Here on the Crown Tundra, I found myself playing for 4-6 to six hours with still plenty of things to do. Just looking at the entire map, you can see that it's a substantial amount of new area compared to the Isle of Armor, and it even becomes comparable in size to a large chunk of the Galar region itself. The core gameplay of the Crown Tundra is of course the same as all traditional Pokemon games. You find Pokemon, catch them, and battle them. But there's many parts of the gameplay experience in the Crown Tundra that I enjoyed. First, like the Isle of Armor, the entire Crown Tundra is also open, meaning that you can go in any direction that you would like. From the moment on arriving at the Crown Tundra, you can choose wherever to go and explore whatever you choose. The main game would have put NPCs that block you from going until you progress the main story, but not here. In fact, upon arriving to the Crown Tundra, I managed to catch a bunch of new Pokemon and even discovered a brand new town all by myself without once having to progress the main story of where the game told me to go. It's this type of freedom that Pokemon Sword and Shield's main game didn't have at all. You couldn't go a route ahead or explore anything until you talked to a certain character, beat the respective city's gym, or did something else. The Crown Tundra also introduces a brand new multiplayer mode called Dynamax Adventure. Dynamax Adventure involves you and a group of others, whether it's real friends or in-game NPCs, going on an adventure in a lair and defeating a series of max raid battles. Making it to the end allows you to challenge some super strong legendary Pokemon for a chance to add them onto your team. The big catch of this new mode here is that you are not allowed to use any of your own Pokemon, but rather pre-made Pokemon sets that are given to you by the game. Some people may not be fond of this as you can't use your favorite Pokemon, but I actually didn't mind the change. This allows for you to strategically think of which Pokemon to bring, and what its moves are allowing for more of a challenge, especially against the strong legendaries. The main part of the Crown Tundra, however, is your adventure to catch three sets of new legendary Pokemon. Each of these comes with their own clues and missions that are handed to you by Peony. You can set out to solve the puzzle of Calyrax, the three Galarian form legendary birds of Kanto, or the new Regis. The best part, however, is that you can choose to do these in any order that you wish. Love the new forms of Galarian Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos? Well, you can choose to do those first. Want to find Reggie Eleki and Reggie Drago first? You can do that as well. And you can choose to go after Calyrex first if you want to also. Having the freedom for which adventure you want to do first is something that I really liked in this DLC, instead of the main game cramming down a certain order for what to do everything in the main story. Each of the adventures to get to these legendary Pokemon is also very well designed. You start out with clues for all of them and have to gather more information as you get new knowledge in order to ultimately find all the legendary Pokemon and where they are hiding. For spoilers, I won't say exactly how to do everything, but there's definitely some stuff that makes you think about it for a little bit. Some parts I was completely lost but happy about that, and for the first time since Generation 5, I felt like I had no idea of where to go next or what to do. And if this does end up being the case, you can always talk to Peony for additional hints or try to solve it by yourself by doing new things. And that's what I felt that Pokemon has just been missing for so long. Recent games have held your hand and told you pretty much everything that you need to do and where to go for the longest time. Here it really feels like you're on your own to crack all of these puzzles. And these aren't simple puzzles that you can figure out immediately either. For example, one of these puzzles involved a door opening with a sharp piercing note. I was thinking about what this could mean. At first I thought I needed to have some loud Pokemon or something like that in my party, but I later found out that it was actually the sound that you make by whistling in the overworld, and if you did this near the door, it causes the door to open. And there's many puzzles that make you think also. Cracking these puzzles, catching the Pokemon, and even just exploring the entirety of the Crown Tundra, finding all the hidden items that are littered throughout the world, can easily take from 6 to 9 hours. 
Even after reaching the end screen for the Crown Tundra, which implies that the main content is over, there's still additional stuff to do, such as encountering Ultra Beasts, as well as the Galarian Star Tournament, so it's easily safe to say that 80% of your DLC content from the Sword and Shield Expansion Pass lies here. Of course with Pokemon Sword and Shield one of its biggest problems are the graphics and with the DLC obviously still using the same engine there isn't going to be a drastic improvement. There are still some areas where the textures aren't really that good, character animations can still be robotic as they do rotate a full 90 degrees before walking left and right, however I do feel that the Crown Tundra is one of the better looking areas in the game. The snow covered trees look nice and some of the snow falling in the areas can look pretty as well. Of course, this isn't anything to write home about considering the other beautiful areas that are achievable by other games on the Nintendo Switch, however it does look alright. The Crown Tundra also comes with some new music tracks for encounters and battles. The Isle of Armors didn't have some of the best tunes for my personal taste, but of course music, like a lot of this, is subjective. Maybe you found the music to be phenomenal, but for the Crown Tundra, I actually did enjoy most of the new themes. The new Reggie theme is pretty nice, and I also like the Calyrex theme too, and some of the location music is also pretty well done. The controls for the Crown Tundra are what you would expect from your typical Pokemon game. There isn't anything new here that you would need to learn in order to play it. You've got your simple moving around with the joystick, selecting with A and pressing back with B, and that's all you need for a Pokemon game. All in all, Pokemon Sword and Shield's Expansion Pass DLC is enjoyable. While the Olive Armor may have left some people worried about the rest, the Crown Tundra definitely delivered with a lot of Pokemon fan service that longtime Pokemon fans have been asking for. Of course, there's still many things to change to make it into a legendary masterpiece, but it's a big step forward for sure in terms of the main game. The rough part, however, is that it comes from having to pay an additional $30 for this DLC content in order to experience it. Pokemon Sword and Shield were definitely pretty lackluster and incomplete games in my opinion when they initially released, but this DLC content definitely fills them up into a full complete adventure, but at the cost of having to spend $90 total. If all of this was in the game from day one last year in November of 2019, these would have easily been some of the best Pokemon games and a free S tier. Getting the DLC on top of that would have felt like an extra reward, but here it really does feel like that the main game was left to be bare bones so that they could charge an additional DLC fee for content which is a shame. Every Pokemon game in the past has given us multiple legendary Pokemon, but Pokemon Sword and Shield only had its Box Legends and Eternatus from day one. For half the price of the game, I personally wouldn't say that the entire DLC is worth it, maybe if it was like $20 or $25, but for Pokemon fans who enjoy catching, battling, and training Pokemon, as well as exploring, all of that and more is easily here in the Crown Tundra, and I think that most people will enjoy it. If you've seen my original review of Pokemon Sword and Shield, you might be surprised to see me give the Crown Tundra a higher score than the entire base game, but it's actually true for me. The Crown Tundra DLC was the most fun that I was able to get out of the 8th generation, and I feel that if you were let down by Pokemon Sword and Shield, you might also feel the same way. The only problem, however, is that it comes with a price. And so there you go guys, that is my review of the Crown Tundra DLC for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please be sure to click that like button and also comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this. How do you guys feel about this DLC? Did you guys enjoy the Crown Tundra? Were you left a little bit disappointed by it? Definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know. If you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to have some more Pokemon content in the future, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on the bell to become a part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at AchoEros so you can be featured in videos, and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo, so definitely be sure to join that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.